All right, my friends, this update has long been coming. Okay, so, um, I completely finished the saucer section from paneling to dec decals to paint and details. It's all done. All I need to do on the saucer section is um, paint a clear coat over it. And I'm going to research that because of the paneling. I think that uh, it's not a gloss coat. It's supposed to be more of a semi-gloss, I believe. But don't quote me on that. I'll figure that out. If you have any ideas, please comment below. And we will be more than happy to, to explore those ideas. In the meantime, um, I went ahead and painted... Um, the uh, grills, as you remember, um, I went ahead and put some putty on here and took these off to replace them with the more quote unquote accurized uh, mag grills. And uh, as you can see, um, I've already detail painted this part of it as well so that uh, the contrast would be like crisp. Now, as you notice, the uh, the putty work on this is not exact. It's, it's ugly looking. Um, I had a hard time sanding this little area here. And I'm going to tell you right now, doing these mag grill replacements, I believe is more, just more of a hassle than what it's worth. It took so long to do this that uh, at the end, I ended up wishing I hadn't started. So if you're doing this project, these are nice, uh, and and by the way, this will cover up the ugliness if you look at this here. Um, and of course, you've got now like a nice, crisp-looking mag grill that has a little bit more accuracy as far as the look is concerned. But if you just go with what's already molded on, you'll be fine. Most people do, and it will save you time. So. As much as I love the way this looks and the ease of painting this alone, uh, apart from the area here, um, I think I won't do this again. I think what I'll do is just stick to the, the already molded in mag grills and just use a lot of tape. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and replace these mag grills. Now, now uh, regarding the chiller grills, uh, I'm still working on these. As you can see, I've painted them uh, with a flat black. Uh, don't know if you can see the, uh, see that contrast here, but there's two of them. And, uh, I ended up, <clears throat> I ended up using just a cheap Elmer's glue here. And I started by putting in the Elmer's glue in between each little notch. And I did that for about this area here. And then I used my finger and I just squished it over as far as it would go to fill in all the uh, grooves there. And that's how I'm masking the little grooves. The idea is that when this is all dry and ready, I'll just pull out the mask and the grooves will stay um, clear and then the, the light will shine through the back. I'm planning to uh, add a few more, another layer of paint uh, to make this more, ha have more of a violet look. So I'm going to mix um, some red and green, um, some red and green, um, paint. And I'm going to use the paint that I got from the, uh, the lacquer paints that I got from the poly transfer company, the shimmering color paints. I'm going to mix these two, uh, red, I'm sorry, not red and green. Pardon me. Scratch that. I'm going to mix red and blue and, uh, red and blue will give you kind of a violet kind of look and, uh, plan to do that. And then I'll give it just a real light dusting of paint. And once that's done, then I'll remove, and it completely dries, then I'll remove the masking on this, okay? So I just wanted to uh, let you know where we're at with that. So let's go ahead and start the process of getting these chiller grills on. And then, of course, uh, by the way, the next step after all this is to... Uh, since my since the focus was on the saucer section and that's all done, uh, I'm going to focus on the nacelles. And so what I plan to do on these nacelles is uh, add lighting on the inside before I clamp them together. So FYI, uh, the lighting on this um, is going to, to be... Uh, what you want to do is you want to place 
your LEDs on the top here and you want them to face away and hit the back right here and reflect off of this and, you know, onto the chiller grills that'll be in this hole here. And the reason you want to do that is because if you don't do that, you end up getting um, a very bright looking set of lights coming right through your chiller grill, ruining the effect, okay? So um want to make sure that you do that, um, light it up right. I don't recommend putting a strip of LEDs right here. I recommend putting your strip of LEDs right up on top here so that they, the light reflects off of this and then goes right into the chiller grill, okay? Something else that, of course, I plan to do is I'm going to place an LED that shoots right through this area right here at the at the end so that you'll see uh, light coming through here onto the black surface, which I still haven't finished painting. And, um, you know, there's there's a few other things I'm doing when it comes to these, to the end cells. So I plan to paint these this same color. These have just been primed for now, but I will go ahead and paint them that same color. And these, of course, will be in the back here. I went ahead and put these together. Now, here's gonna be a little trick here of, of lighting up these four little areas of these fins for the back of the end cells. So um, I believe what I'm going to do for that um, to make this easier, um, instead of putting a really small LED in there, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and use my leftover fiber optic cable. Uh, and this fiber optic cable will kind of fit through these little areas and come out this way. And uh, when that happens, I will uh, attach the end of these, of course, to the um, to a to an LED or a bulb that'll be fit that'll fit right into the uh, in the cell there, and you will see um, a better lighting on these, okay, because of the fiber optic cable. Um, so that's kind of the plan. Uh, I will show you uh, what it looks like when I'm done with that. Um, so that's where we're at with all this. Now, what I want to do next is I kind of want to show you the process of putting on these chiller grills and so that you can just see that happening. And then I'll show you at the end of this video, the saucer section, which uh, actually I've already highlighted on our Instagram channel uh, at JC Model Creation. So if you aren't following us on Instagram, uh, please be sure to do so. Um, we do have our Instagram channel where we post every once in a while. And of course, we are also on Facebook. And by the way, while I'm mentioning all that, uh, if you don't mind, please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Uh, we're almost at this point, we're almost at 500 subscribers. I would love to hit 500 uh, here in May, at least. So uh, please, please, if you wouldn't mind uh, liking and subscribing, uh, we would be very very appreciative. All right, so let's go ahead and get these um, mag grills onto the nacelles. Now, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and just kind of fit these in before I glue them in, just to make sure that we've got the right mag grill with the right nacelle. So be patient as I do that. Go. All right. Right. All right. Yep. And all right. So now that we know that each of these is where they belong, the next step is to glue them on. So let me take care of that. Um, and as you can see, uh, once you put these on, it covers up, um, it does cover up the putty work that you worked on, that, that I worked on, that looks horrible. So <laughs> no need to worry about that putty work, but obviously this will uh, click in there and it will uh, cover that all up.
let these guys dry out. Um, and I think what I'm going to do next is go ahead and prep the paint for um, and spray paint the, um, the chiller grills. So let's let's get that going. Um, Uh, let me get this going. We're going to use a little bit of blue, a little bit of red, not a lot. This isn't going to require a lot, so it'll be okay. Okay, this is the shimmering blue. Since this is a... Um, a lacquer based paint you want to use lacquer to thin it out and this has already been kind of thinned out I've, I've added a little lacquer into this bottle to thin out this blue same thing for the red it's been thinned out with some lacquer inside the bottle uh, when you get these if you order one ounce it's it's strange they sent me this big i think this is a four ounce bottle and it just had this much so at first i thought Hey, you didn't send me my order. You sent me something that wasn't complete. And I called them and we went back and forth, but I ended up realizing, oh, you sent me one ounce in a big, big, huge bottle. So you can definitely, you know, add more lacquer and thin it out a little more and you'll have, you'll have more in there. So um, make, make sure you do that. All right, so let's go ahead and see what this looks like. I'm not gonna paint it. I'm going to spray it first. By the way, with these lacquer paints, these uh, shimmering color lacquer paints, I do put up the PSI on my um, on my compressor um, because uh, they are flaky and they have some flakes in them, and you want that to come out. So. Let's see. Yeah, wonderful. Look at that. Look at that, guys. I can't, I don't know if you can tell, but my eye here, it, this just, this is awesome. Yeah. These shimmering colors, if, if you can learn how to use an airbrush and you can get these shimmering colors, man, they, they certainly do make a difference. Um, the angles. Yeah, this, this looks awesome. Guys. Yeah, really, really nice. Very, very nice. I'm very happy with that. Um, all right, so let me clean all this up and then I'll come back and we'll showcase the saucer section for you. Be right back. Well, we're back. And uh, because there's not enough room on the workbench to really highlight what I wanna show you, uh, I'm doing this in another room here and uh, with plenty of light for you to see. So. Here's a completed saucer section and um, just kind of wanting to review exactly what we did on it. Um, so obviously we did all the inside work first, right? We wired it up. We made sure that um, we made sure that all the wiring on the, on the Enterprise top and bottom uh, were completed. Um, I ended up doing that first. We also had to uh, complete the officer's lounge and the red rec deck uh, as well. And those are lit up. Um, they're not very observable. Uh, like you, you really have to look to see them, but I know they're in there. So um, obviously um, we did the aztec and that's what took the longest. My friends, if you're gonna Aztec using the mask design set, you're gonna spend some time on that. Um, if you do it every single day for a few hours, I'm I'm kind of guessing three to four weeks or less. If you're doing it like me part-time every other day, a few hours, it's gonna take you a few months. I started working on this in December and it's now uh, May 5th. So uh, it took me quite a while, but there were a long stretch of days where I didn't even touch this. Um, there were just so many other things going on. Uh, 
Now I did use the mask design set that includes the masking for the NCC 1701 markings. Uh, I started doing it on this one and then I stopped and reverted back to using decals for this, this and the bottom. And the reason for that was because my saucer isn't as smooth as it looks. It, it, it really is smooth. I mean, you can highlight, you know, some of this and you can see the smoothness on here, but it's not smooth enough. And because of that, there was some paint leak that went into the um, lettering. Some of the red paint went into it. And that's my fault. The red paint that I used in my airbrush was very liquidy and it went right into the masks. So I ended up having to go back and fix this thing. Uh, and what I ended up doing was masking off this particular section and masking off all the lettering and the paint. And it was a hassle, but I did it. And then I spray painted this all white and then I took everything off and it looks great. Um, but I didn't want to go through that again. I was already like, I want to finish this. So I reverted back to the uh, decals on this. Um, it is all fully lit. Um, the um, uh, the uh, deck here, the uh, crystal dome, does turn blue and then amber uh, when you go into warp and all that kind of thing. Um, for the so sensor bands, FYI, um, there are set, you know, you can buy aftermarket decals to put those on. I didn't do that. I went ahead for the sensor bands. Um, I used, I painted them on. And the way I did that was I started on the center first. So I masked everything off for the center band first, and I painted that. And then I masked that off and finished the outer, the, the top and the bottom bands, okay? Now, uh, I say that because it is a process. In fact, uh, something I wanna point out is, every single time you paint something on this thing, let the paint dry. Um, as you remember on one of my previous videos, I mentioned that some of these, uh, some of these areas on the outer, on the bottom of the saucer, uh, some of the paneling was coming off as I was masking it and it was coming off. Well, I didn't let it dry. I, I basically sprayed it on. I waited 10 to 15 minutes and then I masked it again to spray on the next layer. Don't do that, my friends. What you want to do is spray on your first layer of paint uh, if you're masking this off for the paneling and then just let it sit there and dry for a, nap, for a, nap, for a day. I did one day between layers. It's a long process for me, but I just didn't want to mess with uh, with doing that. After I started doing that, I had no problems with paint being lifted off by the masks because the uh, shimmering paint was completely dry at that point. So uh, let it dry as much as possible. You probably don't need to go a whole day to let it dry, but um, yeah, I just wanted to be more safe than sorry on that. So I did that. I continued the process on the top. Obviously, I continued the process on the bottom and uh, you can see all the paneling there on the layers um, for the bottom. I love this little wiggly wavy effect on some of these panels here uh, that that were included on the mask design set. Just makes it look really, really, really nice. Um, obviously you can see that the decals are probably um, very visible. That'll be taken care of with a clear coat. Now again, the clear coat I've gotta be sensitive about because I wanna make sure that I don't wash away all this paneling work I did. So I'm gonna research that. I believe I read something somewhere that said you can save this paneling with a certain clear coat, whether it's semi-gloss or satin. I can't remember which one it was, but uh, I'll check on that. One of the last things I did, so once the painting was all done and this particular piece took quite a while and it was very intricate and I messed up a few times because the, the uh, masking for this particular uh, part of the sensor dome is very, very, very small. Um, and the paint, it just, it was a really, really sensitive part to paint. It's not as perfect as I would want it, but hey, I think it looks great. Um, after I did all the painting, I went through and I started putting on decals. And I do recommend uh, putting on the red uh, border decals for your phaser banks. And uh, obviously I did all the decals for the side uh, navigation lighting and all that. Um, also, um, finally, at the very end, um, I went through and I used uh, crystal clear and I put all the windows in. After all the painting was done, I did all the windows. Now, the only windows that I did not 
uh, put crystal clear in were these top windows here on the bridge. And based on that experience and my experience with crystal clear, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna end up for the rest of this ship using the kit supplied windows instead of crystal clear. So the plan is uh, for the secondary hull of the neck, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do all the painting without the windows on those. And then once I'm ready to close those up, I'll attach the windows and then I'll uh, start the Aztec painting. So when I say I'll do all the painting without windows, I mean all the initial base coat painting is done without windows. Once we're ready to close things up, I'll put the windows in before I close things up and then go to the Aztec painting. And when I do the Aztec painting, depending on where those masking, uh, where the masking goes, uh, mask design has provided some very, very good and accurate masks for all your windows. So I'll just be masking off those windows, okay? Um, when I painted all this, uh, because of the wires, I went ahead and just taped them all together in a little, you know, paint, uh, painters, uh, I used some plastic uh, painter sheets, uh, wrapped, them, wrap, wrapped up all the wires and uh, taped them up just so that they wouldn't be flying all over the place. And uh, that, that worked for me during this painting process. The, the middle uh, of the planetary sensor dome is a combination of all the shimmering colors I had. Uh, green, blue, red, and gold. You mix them all up together and you don't have to mix a whole bunch, just a little bit, because this is not a big area. And you get this silvery chrome kind of color. I don't know if you can see that, but it is kind of a silvery chrome color. And um, it came out perfect. I love it. Uh, I did, by the way, paint the, something else some people have asked about is the, the little shuttle doors or the, the the dock door, docking doors on the side. I added the brass photo etch door at the very, very end after I had started painting the painting process on all this. So I had actually finished all the paneling and everything. And I did the docking door at the very end. I got the piece out and I put it in. And then what I ended up doing is uh, I masked it off right here and then I spray painted it with a white. Uh, and in fact, I used a gloss white primer on that door because I knew that I was gonna have to put uh, some decals on it. So I went ahead and used this, a gloss white spray paint for that. The decal went on great. I think the decals for United Federation of Planets, USS Starship, USS Enterprise, just looks wonderful, looks great. Um, so, you know, uh, overall, I'm really, really happy with the way this saucer came out. It's, it's a whole kit in itself. Um, I've already had some folks who I've shown pictures of the process to asking me how much I'm going to charge. They want this. I've had two or three guys uh, talk to me uh, and they want this. So I, I need to figure out what I'm going to charge once this whole lighted kit is done so I can give that to them. And then I've got somebody asking me to build him a uh, uh, an Enterprise D uh, because Picard just came out. So I imagine that everybody's looking at the old Enterprise D and saying, I want one of those. And it just so happens I have a couple of those kits. So um, I've got another commission build coming up after this, but this is taking up so much time, my friends, that, well, we're gonna <laughs> continue working on it until we can finish it. All right, let, I'm gonna move on and we're gonna show you this thing lit up so you can see what it looks like lit up. And uh, we'll be right back for that. I'm gonna move everything back to the, uh, to the workbench. Be right back, everybody. All right, everybody, we're back at the workbench. And of course, here's the uh, the Enterprise that we just highlighted, uh, seen in, it in a different light. Uh, obviously, the light uh, that you just had previously was sunlight from far away. Here's spotlight uh, that's on it from the lamp that I use when I'm filming. And it gives you a little bit more detail going on here on, on this Aztec. Um, it makes it really, really pop, um, obviously, in the movie. They did all the lighting, um, you know, using spotlights <laughs> on the ship. So it really made the uh, uh, the detail pop on this. And I love how the colors just change, you know, as you look at it from different angles. So really, really nice uh, the way this all came out. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn off the light. And then we're going to turn on the lights 
on the dome. So the lighting's gonna change. This is now a combination of the light from my ceiling and a little bit of sunlight coming through from behind me. So that's what you're seeing now. Um, so obviously you can see my shadow. <laughs> All right, so let me turn this on and see what, what a difference this is gonna make here. I might need to turn, what? You know what, let me turn off the, uh, the rest of the lights. Okay, so I turned off the uh, ceiling light and all the light that's in this room right now is uh, the sunlight that's seeping through from the closed blinds behind me. So let's see what this looks like as we turn this on. All right, there you go. Um, as you can see, I made sure that I used a spotlight on the front of the saucer so that I could uh, highlight the NCC-1701. Um, I don't know if you can tell or not, but I did shave down the phaser banks um, so it'd be more like the movie there. Uh, so, you know, you don't have that raised effect on the phaser bank. You, you only see the shadow of the two phasers coming out. Um, did the same thing with all the other phasers. Um, by the way, speaking of the phasers, I went ahead and let the uh, phasers glow. The phaser banks are glowing. Uh, I don't know if you can tell that or not, but um, in the other video, you saw how I um, did that. I'm using fiber uh, pieces of fiber optic cable that were mushroomed by uh, heat. And so because of that, you know, you can see the light coming in, coming out from the inside of the ship there. So really, really happy with that. I like the way that looks, so I went ahead and left it like that. Um, you've got your navigation lights on the nav lights, by the way. Um, I did use crystal clear to create domes on that. So there are domes on both nav, all the nav lights. And they're not really high, high domes. Um, it's really more, it's supposed to be flush. So uh, because it's blinking, it doesn't look flush, but it does, it's very flush when you look at it without the lights on. You have your thrusters, they're all yellow. I'm really happy with that. They, they came out looking great. Um, there's your rec room, which uh, this video will not do it any justice. When you're here in person, you can see right through that. Unfortunately, I can't get a good lock on, on the focus on this. I apologize about that. Uh, I didn't talk about the, um, the thrusters in the back. Um, that is yellow, amber light uh, behind there. And what I did is I used the brass uh, photo etch pieces for that but I also covered those brass photo etched pieces with the decals that came with the ship, just to give it more of a crisp line uh, around the, the outline of the thruster banks there. Um, I just wasn't happy with the paint job. It was kind of peeling off the brass there and all that. So uh, using this, uh, this decal, it really uh, cleaned it up. So I'm really happy about that. All right, and then you've got your officer's lounge, which again, you can't see in this video uh, because of the lighting. Um, there is the, um, the little light at the top that's flashing, strobe light there. Um, I think everything really, really looks nice. And you see all these lights just blinking. So let me go ahead and turn this over for you. Give me a second. And hopefully the uh, terminals won't touch. If they touch, this all turns off. So make sure that doesn't touch. There we go. All right. All righty. So here we go. Um, let me uh, zoom in and you can see a little, a little better here. Hold on a second. There you go. Um, everything on the underside looks great. Um, I love the way the light comes out of the planetary sensor dome. It highlights the NCC-1701 there. And I did nothing special for that. This is just the kit supplied um, part that uh, had the clear parts. I had to mask off and paint and all that. And uh, I just made sure that it was in the right position. And obviously it is, and it's highlighting that NCC-1701 perfectly. So very, very happy with that. Um, very happy with the way this all came out. This looks beautiful, uh, lit up. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the whole thing put together and lit up. And uh, 
continuing this process, my friends. All right. What do you think? It's been a journey. <laughs> it's been a journey, but hey, uh, at the end, it'll be worth it once this is all said and done. I'm really, really uh, satisfied with, uh, with the way it's turned out so far. Okay, listen. Uh, I'm going to end this video here. Once again, if you don't mind, please like, subscribe. Um, really, I'm trying to shoot for that 500 subscribers. And the, of course, the ultimate goal is a thousand subscribers or more. Uh, if you can share, share some of this stuff on your socials and uh, share them in your Facebook groups, uh, it would help me tremendously. All right, my friends, I'm looking forward to reading some of your comments. And thank you, as, as always, for those comments. Very, very helpful. Appreciate the tips. Appreciate the the commentary. Uh, I'm learning things I didn't know. So it's it's wonderful. All right. We will see you at our next video update. And we'll talk to you soon.